Hi, I'm Susan Jacob and I'm going to show a case of a tucked in lamella keratoplasty or TILK as first described by Vajpayee, Tityal and Sharma et al. in 2008. This was a patient with uh, bilateral pellucid marginal degeneration. As you can see, her best corrected visual acuity was only 6 by 36 in both the eyes. She had visited nine hospitals and was rejected for surgery everywhere. This is her PAS OCT of the right eye. And you can see that the thinnest pachymetry in the corneal periphery is about 270 microns. Her astigmatism is against the rule of minus 25.5 diopters. The left eye AS OCT pachymetry is also similar with inferior thinning. And uh, I have taken up the right eye for surgery first. You can see the severe grade of uh, pellucid marginal degeneration. What I'm doing is estimating the extent of ectasia first, both in the horizontal, oblique, and the vertical meridia. This shows an ectatic zone of about 9 millimeters. You can see that the AC is quite deep because of the severe ectasia, and therefore phaco emulsification is going to be slightly tough. I have made the clear corneal phaco incisions, and I'm doing a rexus. You can see that there is some amount of spontaneous uh, bleeding from the angles of the anterior chamber without any inciting factor. I have hydroprolapsed the nucleus out into the anterior chamber and I emulsify it now within the anterior chamber. Once the nucleus is emulsified, I now turn my attention to cortex removal and we do it using the IA probe. I next implant the intraocular lens, but during implantation, you can see that the IUL has flipped. However, since it's an aspheric biconvex IUL, I go ahead and do not try to reinvert it, but instead implant it the way that it has turned over. I now suture both the main and side ports as I want a taut anterior chamber and I place the trephine and verify the positioning of my trephine. A 10 millimeter partial thickness trephination is then done to include the area of ectasia and I now deepen the partial cut further so as to get a groove all around the trephine. I am now attempting to create an unverse big bubble but uh, as you can see my needle has perforated uh, through the endothelium and the bubble instead enters the anterior chamber. You can see again I am uh, trying a second pass and you can see that air is entering the anterior chamber through the perforation and all I get is some tissue emphysema. A third side is attempted and you can see a big bubble forming now. Uh, it's uh, not really enlarging beyond the point of perforation as you can see. I have glided my needle into the big bubble in an attempt to enlarge it further but again you can see that it refuses to enlarge beyond the point of perforation superiorly. What I do now is induce stromal emphysema to aid me in my dissection. Once I have done this, I take a bevel up uh, crescent blade and debulk the anterior stroma. As I go inferiorly, you can see that I have entered the bubble space there. I keep the flap back for the time being and now I concentrate on doing an inferior 180 degree peripheral lamella dissection to create a space for tucking in my lamellar graft. This lamellar dissection extends uh, throughout the inferior 180 degrees and can extend into the scleral zone as well. I now turn my attention back to the lamellar keratoplasty and I dissect the superficial stroma off using a blunt crescent blade taking care at all times not to cause accidental perforation of the desmus membrane. Once the host cornea has so been prepared we now turn our attention to the donor corneoscleral rim which I have mounted on an artificial anterior chamber. I use a 10 millimeter trephine to create a partial thickness trephination and then perform an inferior 180 degree peripheral lamella dissection. Once I've done this I cut the superior 180 degree full thickness and then Dismount the donor graft from the artificial anterior chamber. The superior rim is excised and the inferior portion of the inferior 180 degree peripheral lamella is also excised. This gives you a donor graft that has an inferior peripheral skirt of tissue which is used in order to thicken the peripheral host stromal thickness. So you can see that what I'm doing now is stripping the desmus membrane of the donor graft and once that is done I put an anchoring suture at 12 o'clock to anchor the graft to the host cornea. Inferior bite inserts a peripheral donor skirt into the lamellar host space and you can see that I take a deep bite uh, which allows the peripheral skirt of tissue to be tucked into the lamellar space that was originally created in the host cornea. The peripheral skirt thus thickens the peripheral host stromal thickness and uh, we know that this is the uh, problem in pellucid marginal degeneration and this is exactly what we are trying to take care of. Once the entire suturing has been done, uh, what I do is uh, inject air into the anterior chamber and you can see the first post-operative day appearance of the patient. The uh, desmus membrane is well attached to the graft. 
and the eye looks quiet. The pupil is round and the IUL is in place. The air bubble is still there in the anterior chamber, though, though it has got mostly absorbed. The eight-month appearance of the patient shows a best corrected visual acuity of 6 by 9 with just a minus 2.5 diopter cylinder, which is a gross uh, improvement for the patient. And the patient was extremely happy with the results. You can see that the cornea is very clear and the peripheral skirt of tucked-in tissue is seen, uh, which shows the increased corneal thickness that has thus been gained by this procedure in the peripheral cornea. This increased uh, skirt of tissue goes all around the inferior 180 degrees, as can be seen here. And uh, the eight months post-operative anti-segment OCT also shows the tucked-in bit of tissue, which aids in increasing corneal thickness. Again, the anterior segment OCT scan running through the inferior cornea showing the increased thickness of the cornea and uh, the patient was as i mentioned earlier extremely happy and she elected to undergo surgery in the second eye as well so this is again the 10 months post-operative appearance of the first eye clear cornea as can be seen here a well-centered intraocular lens and a clear visual axis with very very minimal astigmatism thickened peripheral corneal stroma and a happy patient the pachymetric map shows an improvement in thickness in the periphery as compared to the pre-op ASOCT which shows a thin inferior cornea. This shows the 4 month post-operative appearance of the other eye of the patient after having undergone a similar procedure. Thanks a lot for watching.